Hi guys. So I'm going to make a very simple shaker. I'm going to show you how to do that. If you've seen my previous video, um, I'm not sure whether I've done it in, whether I decided to do it in one or two parts uh, because there's quite a lot of detail in it. Um, so it may be in two parts, it may just be in the one part, but it's definitely going to be before this video um, on my uh, video list. Is that what they call it? <laughs> on my chat, on my YouTube channel. So um, if you go back and watch that one, that one explains how to make a sort of separate element shaker piece, if that, if you know what I mean. So it's kind of separate to your card. Whereas this one I'm going to create within the card, um, sort of. So <laughs> it will make sense once we get going. But this is a much simpler way. If you're brand new to shaker cards and you've never done it before, or you you know you're still learning with them, um, this is a much easier way. And one of the first ways I learned how to do this. So I'm going to use. Um, I've kind of prepped everything just to save a bit of time, hopefully. Um, so yeah, so the dies I use, these are MNC M C Boutique Stitched Circles. Woo, say that three times fast. Um, these are just a stitch circle and you'll see why I decided to use that. Um, I'll explain that in a minute. It doesn't have to be a stitch circle and it doesn't have to be this brand, obviously. It can be whatever you've got. If you've got spellbinder circles, if you've got a circle cutter, that'll work. Um, I just want to, I like the stitching on this. Um, the idea behind it when you when you see what I'm going with is to create a porthole um, and that's going to be the shaker element on the card. But I I actually, I know that um, Lawn Fawn have some sort of like frame dies that are, I think they're called portholes, I'm not sure. But they are specifically for that, for a portal. Um, so I had to create one. So if I, so if you have a circle frame, that will work as well. But I had to kind of create the frame to create what looks like a portal. So I'll explain it in a second. Um, then I've got the ocean side, uh, sorry, the ocean hillside pop-up add-on. <laughs> And I've used the, um, I think it was a grassy one I used in a previous video on an Easter card, um, which, yes, that should be up as well. I do a lot of filming all at the same time and then I try and remember what order I've put things in when I upload them. Um, I've got some stamping blocks, I've got some ink, foam tape, right? So this is your foam adhesive um, that we'll be using to create the, the depth. Um, where do I want to go next? Let's go, no, let's carry on here. So these are the two, um, what are they called? The pop-up, <laughs> the ocean pop-ups. So yes, there's a funny little thing here, but they actually work with a pop-up element that goes inside a card, but I'm using them just as waves on this card. Um, so that's another thing, just if you if you've got dies that have a certain look about them see if you can use them in different ways not just what they're meant for um, and you'll get more use out of them um, so this is cut in Stampin' Up's Bermuda Bay this is Stampin' Up Pacific I can't say that word today <laughs> Pacific Point um, and this is some pool party um, Stampin' Up and some slate grey um, cardstock. So those are my two waves that I've created with this die so I can get rid of that now. I have a Pacific Point Pacific? Yeah, Pacific Point card base and that's 11 by uh, 4 and a quarter folded it at 5 and a half. It's going to go as a top folding card today. So we don't need that right now. And then what I have is I have two pieces of the uh, pool party Stampin' Up cardstock and what I did one is going to be just a the same just a same size element uh, sorry they're, two, they're both the same size that's what I'm trying to say one's going to be plain the other one I cut a circle out so I'm just going to show you what I've done here 
so this circle is using and I wouldn't worry too much about size you need to kind of look at your card and I just kind of went well that's the open size opening I wanted because that's what works on my card um, if you've got a, a small square card you could have a bigger circle so um, or square or oval or whatever shape you don't limit it just to circles and squares and stuff like that this kind of works with the theme but if you got star shapes or hearts or anything like that, you can do exactly the same thing so I die cut using this size and then I just used the size bigger on a piece of in fact if I get it a piece of smoky slate cardstock and what I did was I took the size bigger put it in roughly in the center because I can still use this afterwards to do a, a similar thing and then I just lay this on top and got the gap between the two as even as possible and then used some washi tape, taped it down and then ran it through my die cut machine to die cut not only the center of this because you'll have the center of this piece as well but it created a frame um, with some stitch detail on it and that's going to create my porthole so that's what that that's how I did that just get these out of the way <clears throat> so that's going to create the portal then I've used some sorry I've just cut some this is actually like um, laminating pouches that are just without anything in between it's actually left over from when I made some um, dividers for my I've put like cardstock I laminated some cardstock and made dividers for my stamps in it and um dies so I know what category they're in or what manufacturer it is or whatever so this is kind of like the the leftover so I've got loads of this stuff and um, I use that you can use acetate you can use packaging you can use something clear but you want it somewhat I mean this isn't super flimsy but you don't want it to be too flimsy like I wouldn't use a plastic wallet plastic is too flimsy you need something with a little bit of sturdiness to it so if you think acetate type thing that'll work so what I'm going to do is first of all we're going to stick the oh I haven't finished telling you about the others <laughs> right so I like to color in that's kind of my thing so what I did was one day I just sat and I stamped a whole bunch of stamps out so I've got the lawn fawn Manatee Rific, haha, <laughs> stamp set. So I stamped some of them elements. Uh, the Donna <laughs> stamp set and the You Are Sublime stamp set. So I stamped them out because they're all sort of ocean themed, which I love. Um, so I stamped them all out and I actually used some, um, I believe the card I used was a Smith's. Um, oh what's it called a uh, mixed media paper and it's it's almost white so um but it, it's great and um what i did was i stamped a whole bunch of them like i said and i then used my what uh winsor and newton um watercolor i think they're the cotman uh watercolor paints and i just sat and painted one night and experiment with experimented with colors um, so for example where's the where's the dude like that one I experimented with some of the different purples and pinks and I love how he turned out um, you know just experimenting and that's that's I think that's the best way to learn how to do some of these things like watercoloring or um, you know painting or inking or blending or whatever it is is to, is to just do that just stamp out a stamp set um, doesn't have to be a billion different stamps just stamp out one stamp set with images and just sit and, and play and that's how you how you learn um, I then used my scanner cut um, to cut them out but if you've got coordinating dies or if you can still use your you know just a pair of scissors and, and you're happy to sit and cut them out then do it that way those are my images 
um, that I'm going to use. I'm not saying I'm going to use all the images, but <laughs> so that's quite a lot. <laughs> Right, so now I've got three layers, um, I suppose four including the front, but <laughs> there's three layers in the back to create quite a nice well that I can place some doodads in. So I have my embellishment stored in these Stampin' Up, um, these are the uh, full, double full, I don't know, wide cases. Um, so I have some blue and some green. I thought they'd be nice for ocean. Oceany theme. So let's see what I've got in here. I've got some beads. Like these beads. These ones could look quite nice. Nice colour. These are sort of mother of pearlish. They might look nicer. Let's see what green ones I've got. I don't know why, but I thought the green might look quite nice. Oh, here are these. Those are nice green ones, and these are seaweedy colours, aren't they? So let's have more. <clears throat> let's have those colours. Just get these out of the way. Maybe some of these. Yeah. So don't forget to shop your stash. Right, I'm loving these green ones because these are definitely um, seaweedy sort of colours. So I'm just going to pop them in there. Oh, something I didn't do. Let's do that quickly. Is use my. powder tool because <clears throat> there's a bit of maybe a bit of stick in there just want to run it around the edges where the sticky is you might not have any sticky but just in case and then also over the plastic because it could create some static 
So, where was I? Beads. Little beads. That is poor. And those guys in there. And they definitely need some blue ones, I think. Just so pretty. And also, these are these aren't seed beads, I don't think. I think seed beads are smaller than this. But even these beads, they need to be the right. You know, you need enough depth for them. I think I used um, orange ones like this. Is it orange ones on a Halloween card. And um, yeah, they were a little bit too, I didn't have enough height. So think about what you want to put into things like this um, before you actually do that. And that way you'll be able to make sure you've got enough depth. So that's essentially what it's going to do. I feel like I need more. To add some more, to add some more blue ones, I think. A few more blues and a few more. Oh, the these dark green ones—they just oh, they just lend themselves so well. They've got almost like a metallic-y look to them. But you can have fun with those. You can use sequins. You can use um, yeah, all sorts of stuff. So I'm hoping that's enough. So like that, yeah, yeah, we should be good. Right, so now carefully <laughs> take all your tape off and try not to get your hand in it because it will ping everywhere. So, then carefully, the other thing you could do is you could put some, um, you could stamp some like bubbles or something like that in the background as well if you wanted to. Um, I'm obviously not doing that today, but and then you get that stuck on there. And then just round the look at that. And yeah, the more depth you have, the more you'll be able to you know squeeze in there. But isn't that sweet? I like it. I like it a lot. So yeah, I could have put something in the background as well. Um but now's when you stick all these things on. I didn't think about the sentiment either, did I? No. <laughs> so now I've got all these fun things to play with. Oh, I could have stuck him in the inside there. Ah, oh, silly me. Never mind. So we've got things like this that we can stick around. He can be, yeah, so there's there's a tip. Maybe decide what you want on the inside so you look like you've got a scene at, on the inside of the card as well, on the inside of the shaker. But we're gonna make it work, so let's see now. Got this little dude. Depends what you want to do. I see the bunch of fish. I'm going to take this part because this isn't, it's going to drive me mad. So, <laughs> I will have to use another 
his card. Right, I think I've sort of salvaged what I'd done. <laughs> right, I took the beads out and um, that's what happened. <laughs> right, what I did was I got another piece of cardstock. This is actually mint macaron because I haven't got any more pool party. So it kind of makes more sense because this is kind of like the sky and then this is looking into slightly you know, water is not going to be exactly the same colour as sky, right? So I figured it would work. Then what I did was I used the template for the uh, the larger circle on there. And then I just, once I'd drawn that in, I then used that just to somehow centre that. So this is the actual gap that we've got. And then the outer ring is to another guide just to make sure I don't go past that. So I think what I'll do for this section, because now I just need to decide what I want to do, you know, where I want these doodads to go. And these need to be stuck flat. Um, you don't want any dimension here because otherwise the beads will just get stuck. They may get stuck anyway because this is thickish cardstock. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but yes. Yeah. And then that, when you sort of look over the top. Oh, I didn't think of that, did I? Oh, no, I did. No, I didn't. So when I look over the top, how is this working? Yeah. When I look over the top, then I can sort of see what I'm going to see through the portal. Don't forget, you can also stick some pieces on this piece here so you could have say a piece of um, what's it called seaweed <laughs> stuck to the plastic so that it's gives it more dimension I might do that so I think I'm going to speed through this bit because otherwise you guys are going to really get bored and then I'll come back
whopper of a card. <laughs> so yes, you can make easily make a shaker card out of that, but I would think about what's going to go on the inside of the shaker part. So this bit here, your windowed bit, just so that um, just so that you know whether or not the, the shaker elements are going to get stuck behind anything. Um, I think for mine it would have been with the beads, they're, they're kind of chunky so it would have got stuck against or behind these front pieces and things like that so in the end I decided not to um, but it still makes a good dimensional kind of card so although not a full-on shaker card you can do this both ways so I have no idea what the title of this video is going to be <laughs> because it should have been a shaker card anyway so there you go that is that Ooh, I can open it so there's the elements and if you're going to do this sort of thing you don't necessarily need like I say that many layers <laughs> that's quite chunky but I'm hand delivering it so that's okay um, yeah it's just a bit of fun so there's that and then the inside you are sublime <laughs> right I will see you in the next one hopefully you've managed to get through to the end of this one thank you very much if you have don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification button button if you want to see more from me and when I create more I will share more so um, I will see you in the next one guys bye